Good morning, Children Baptist Church, and to those that are listening, welcome to our morning worship service. Our opening scripture today is coming from a very familiar passage, Psalms 23. The Bible reads, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pasture. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they cover me. Thou preparest to take before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Why don't you clap those hands and tell God, thank you for being your shepherd. Thank you for being your king. Thank you for blessing you with surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. This is the second Sunday in the month of March, and we are excited about what God is doing in this season. We are excited that God is a great God. He is an awesome God. He is a mighty God, and we're looking forward to what's to come, because I believe the best is yet to come. So if you're excited about your future, I want you to clap those hands. I want you to charge the atmosphere of your living room, of your bedroom, of your kitchen, wherever you're watching. I want you to tell the Lord, thank you. Come on and give God a glory.
way, God. Have your way. We honor you, Lord. We give you glory. We give you praise. Use me for your glory. Without the words of my mouth, the message of my heart be acceptable in that sight, oh God. Touch those that's going to hear. Hallelujah, Lord. Give us insight. Give us clarity, God. But call someone. Draw that man, that woman, that boy, that girl under you. They don't know you in the part of their sin. We pray right now for salvation. We pray right now for encouragement. God, we pray right now for the will of God. Hallelujah. In your son Jesus' name, we honor you. We give you glory. We tell you thank you, Lord, for meeting us here. In Jesus' name. We tell you thank you, Lord, for meeting us here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If you have your Bibles, open it to the book of Jeremiah. Going back to Jeremiah, who was there last week. Chapter 29. Last week. This week, we're going to chapter 1. Verses 4 through 10. Jeremiah. Chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. The Bible reads, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you. To deliver you, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to grow down, to build and to plant. Amen. Last week we looked at Jeremiah 29 and one of the verses was uh, verse 11 which says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Well, last week God encouraged us, reminded us that God has a plan for our lives. And I'll come to let you know that again on this week, that God has a plan for our lives. So he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and to give you a hope. It is exciting to know that God is thinking about me. It is exciting to know that God has a plan for my life. It is exciting to know that I am significant enough to God that when I was in my mother's womb, God said he knew me. That God knew you, when I was in my mother's womb, the Bible says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. The message Bible says it this way, before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, before you broke through, the Bible says, I had holy plans for you. He tells Jeremiah, well, I called you to be a prophet to the nation. That's what I had in mind for you. So when I think about the fact that God has a plan for my life, when I think about the fact before I was born, God said he knew me and he ordained me and he uh, 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 set my path, I, I have to ask myself the question, how do I align my life? with the will of God or the plan of God for my life. How do I know if I'm on the right path? If I'm doing the right thing at the right time? How do I know, here's a big one, if I'm qualified to be what God has called me to be? Uh, to be true about it, many of us are just like Jeremiah. We don't see ourselves as God sees us. 
We see our shortcomings. We see our mistakes. We see our past. We see our parents and our grandparents. We see the side of town that we grew up on. We see the amount of money that we have in the bank. We see our education and our influence. We see everything else. And sometimes we focus ourselves on other people. We see other people in their glory and we dare not try to compare ourselves to them because uh, they may be smarter, they may be taller, they may be more gifted than you, they may have a little bit more influence than you. So we don't try to compare ourselves to them because it makes us look a little bit insignificant, a little bit more inadequate. But I need you to know, I need you to know, I need you to understand in all the splendor that you see on the outside, there still lies spaces, places of inadequacy in them as well. What you see is what they want you to see. And let's not focus on everybody else. Sometimes we get off track by focusing on everybody else. Let's focus on ourselves. He says, well, I, 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 I still know, I still believe that God has a plan for my life. So I want to see myself as God sees me. I don't want to see myself as I see myself, but I want to know how does God see me. Amen. I want to be in alignment, in agreement with the word of God and the will of God for my life. Jeremiah, like many of us, we, we, we make excuses when God calls us, when we have a purpose, when we have a plan, when we feel that tugging and that nug upon our lives, when God has touched us and said, I want you to go here, I want you to do this, I want you to be my mouthpiece. We come up with excuses because we know us. Jeremiah said, oh, Lord God, you got it wrong. I heard the plan that you got from, but you really, you must be mistaken. Jeremiah says, behold, I, I, I cannot speak. I'm a child, I'm a child, I'm a child, I'm a child. I cannot speak. I am a child. Jeremiah heard the plan and the purpose of God for his life, but he said, no, nah, you, you, you don't have the right one. I can't speak. I'm a youth. I'm insignificant. I'm, I'm, I'm a child. But, but, but the Bible says, before I formed you, Jeremiah, I knew who you were. Before you came out your mother's womb, I sanctified you and I ordained you a prophet to the nations. It doesn't matter if you feel inadequate. It doesn't matter if you know your shortcomings. Uh, you may say, I cannot speak or you don't have enough money. You may say, I am a youth or I am black. You may say that you may have all these issues that stop you from being used. But I need you to listen. Here's your point number one. Your ability, your resources, your influence does not hinder God's ability to use you where he has assigned you. Say it again, Craig. Your ability, your resources, your influence does not hinder God's ability to use you where he has assigned you. God desires still to get the glory out of your life. God desires to get the more out of your life. Point number two, be careful what you give voice to. Say that again, pray. Be careful what you give voice to. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits thereof. Uh, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Bishop Tom Hall says it this way, your funeral and your future are in your mouth. Good God Almighty, your funeral and your future are in your mouth. So tell your neighbor, stop magnifying what you can't do. We always say, well, we can't do it. I can't do that. We can't do that. I can't do that. We can't do that. We don't have enough of this. We can't do that. I don't have enough of this. Now stop magnifying what you can't do. Stop magnifying what you don't have. Stop magnifying who don't like you and who don't love you. Stop magnifying uh, that you grew up on this side of town and you don't have all, all these barriers in your life. Stop magnifying your shortcomings and start speaking life. Declare, I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Declare uh, uh, that, 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 that I am the head and not the tail. Declare that God came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Declare the word of God over your life and stop declaring your shortcomings. Mm. You and I must learn how to decree and declare 
Well, thus says the Lord about our lives, about our health, about our wealth, about our family, about our, our future. We got to learn how to declare what God has said about our children and about our purpose. Stop calling your children bad. Stop calling your children they're just going to be like their daddy. Stop saying you are nobody. Stop saying I grew up over here where my parents did this and my grandparents did that and I'm going to do the same thing. The devil is a liar. I came to break the chain. I came to stop the curse. I came to to set a new course. I refuse to be. Oh, good God Almighty, you don't understand that God has a plan for your life. So I got to speak what thus says the Lord. Tell your household, tell your neighbors, pay attention to what you speak out of your mouth. For what you speak out your mouth matters. God told Jeremiah, God told Jeremiah, don't say that. I need to get a t-shirt say, don't say that. Every now and then you need to tell somebody, don't you say that. I can't do this math. Don't you say that. I can't buy a house. Don't you say that. I can't find a man. Don't you say that. You keep speaking, you can't find a man, you're going to die alone with him. You better start saying that you're beautiful, you're fine, and all the men want you or something. You better change your talk. Stop saying every man is a dog. You're going to keep attracting men that are dogs. You better every now and then you got to say, don't say that, 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 don't say that. Stop saying you're sick. Stop saying you're tired. Stop saying nobody loves me. Stop saying nobody cares. Stop saying I just can't get ahead. Stop saying that foolishness out of your mouth. We got two, two problems, two problems, two problems. Either we say the wrong thing or we don't say nothing at all. That don't help your case. You can't be on mute and then you cannot speak the right thing. <laughs> Verse 7 of Jeremiah 1, he says, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Don't say that you're not a child. God says, Hey, listen, you got to trust me, son. God wants obedience and God wants total control. God tells Jeremiah, you will go where I shall see you and you shall speak whatever I command you. Don't you tell me what you cannot do. We must understand, regardless of our issues, God always empowers us to fulfill what he has called us to do. Amen. Regardless of your shortcomings, God always empowers us to fulfill what he has called us to do. So you may not be qualified in your eyes or in somebody else's eyes, but God doesn't want you to be qualified before you come. He just wants you to come. He just wants you to say, I'll be used by you, God. He just wants you to say, I'll go wherever you send me, God. He just wants an obedient heart. And John, the multitude followed Jesus. He didn't have enough. He said, what we got? Well, we don't have enough. We got maybe 200 dineros. And that's not enough to buy enough food for the 5,000. But it is a land with, 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 with five fish and, and two, two small, with five barley loaves and two small fish. God can take what you think is not enough. And he can multiply it and empower it where you will have leftovers. <laughs> You will have leftovers. You will have leftovers. You will have more than enough. They took up the fragments in that story. It had uh, uh, 12 baskets, the Bible says. You will have more than enough. Just bring God what you got. Bring God your gift. Bring God your talent. Bring God your smile. Bring God your, 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 your praise. Bring God your yes. Bring God your amen. Bring God your willing heart and watch God empower you to fulfill what God has called you to do. Amen. He's not looking for you to be qualified in skill and talent. There's a lot of skillful and talented people in the church and in the body of Christ. But that don't mean they're called to do what God has called them to do. Sometimes people just want them to showcase their talent. But that don't mean they have the anointing. I'll take the anointing over talent 
anytime. I'll take the anointing over talent anytime because the anointing is what destroys the yoke. He's looking for us to be willing and obedient to his voice and his command. He says, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. It's when we recognize that we don't have enough that God shows up. It's when we recognize that I can't do this by myself that God shows up. It's when we recognize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, when we recognize how insignificant and how inadequate we are, and you don't have enough, I don't care how smart you are, but it was the favor and mercy of God that got you to where you are. Uh, you got always the sharpest pencil in your box. Stop thinking it's because of you that you're where you are, but it's the grace of God that got you where you are and you're on assignment to fulfill the purpose that God has for you. When you don't have enough, when you come up short, that's opportunity for God to show up in your life and prove himself to be your God, to be your king, to be your redeemer, to be your healer, to be your provider, to be your peace, to be your joy, to be all that you need him to be. But when you think you got it all, or you use the fact that you don't have enough and you don't allow God to move. See, the problem is we're always looking for God to use somebody else when God has called us to do the same thing for somebody else to do. All of us have an assignment. All of us has been called by God for a purpose. We always want to look at everybody else. God told Jeremiah, he's telling us this morning, in verse 8, go to verse 8, go to verse 8. I heard you, Jeremiah. You said you can't do it. You said you, 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 you can't speak. You said you're a youth. You said, well, I need you to understand that I have commissioned you. I have assigned you. I have placed you on assignment. And he said, now that you're on assignment, I need you to understand in verse 8, do not be afraid of their faces. And you got to recognize that I am with you to deliver you. Save the Lord. I said again, do not be afraid of their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord. Here's your point number three. God is a promise keeper. Write that down. Put it in the chat. God is a promise keeper. Don't you allow the faces to stop you. Don't you allow the faces to make you back up. Sometimes we observe the crowd. And we look at their faces. And we look at what, what ability we think they have. And sometimes we humble, we, 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 we bow down and say, we're not going to do what God called us to do. But then you get home, you can't sleep, you can't rest, you can't shake that thing that God has called you to do. But when you saw the crowd, I wonder what they're going to say. I wonder what they're going to think about me. Well, I don't have a title yet. I, 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 I don't have that position yet. God ain't called no title. If you need a title to be used by God, no, you will know. You're only tithing to be Christian. Amen. 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 God is a promise keeper. He said, don't be afraid of their faces. Don't be afraid of what you see. Don't be afraid of the onlookers. Don't allow the, 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 the spectators to stop you from fulfilling what God has called you to do. We always want to look for man to validate what God has said. You don't always need man to validate what God has called you to do. We ought to be encouraged. We ought to be courageous. And not walk in fear. We ought to trust and know that God is with us. We ought to recognize that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. Tell yourself, I shall not walk in fear. Now you got to declare like you really mean it. Even those of you who are watching on Facebook Live, I shall not walk in fear. 
I shall not walk in fear. I shall not fear their faces. I shall not allow the opinions of others to stop me from being all that God has called me to do. I shall not. You want to try something, but you're afraid that you're going to fail and you're afraid what people are going to say about you. Everyone that is successful has failed at something. And every failure is a learning experience. You learn something more about yourself. You learn something about the procedures and the steps and the requirements that's needed for you to be successful on the next go round. But if you're willing, if you're if you're not willing to try something, if you're not willing to try God, how can you succeed at God and what God called you to do? I guarantee you, those musicians when they first started playing, don't they, they did not sound like they sound today. They probably didn't know what a chord was or what a, 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 a C, C flat. I don't even know the name of the keys. I didn't do none of that stuff. But they had to keep trying to keep practicing and allow God to touch their talent and put an anointing on top of their talent so that God can get the glory out of their gift. I shall walk by faith and not by sight. I shall believe and declare the word of God over my life. I will not abort what God has called me to do. So you got to recognize fear comes to paralyze you. Fear comes to trap you in your place. Fear comes to make you do an about face and say, I quit. I throw in a towel. I ain't going to do that. I know God called me, but I, I ain't ready for that yet. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't I don't know about that. God, I don't think you got the right one. Call Mrs. Uh, 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 brother, uh, uh, Mr. 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 always doing stuff good. Uh, God, I got a past. I got a history. I, I've done some dirt. If, if, if they only knew, God, what I've done, you wouldn't be calling me, God. If you only knew, God, you forgot what I did. And you want to call me? God, you really want to call me? God says, if I called you, I will empower you to fulfill what I've called you to do. So don't allow the opinions of others to stop you. Verse number nine says, Then the Lord put forth his hand. Jeremiah says, And touch my mouth. Oh, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words, I have put my words in thy mouth. Again, I want to announce to you, and I'm not going to be before you long, that what you say matters. The symbolic, though historical, act of touching the lips of the prophet was a sign that God would frame in his mouth what he would speak. In the same manner, Isaiah's lips were touched with a hot coal. The expression, I have put my words in that mouth, was a divine pledge of inspiration whereby holy men of God speak as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Uh, I, I pointed that out because I need you to understand what you say matters. As you are, as we are used by God, we must make sure that we're not moved by our emotions and our feelings. We must make sure that we're not moved by our emotions and our feelings, that we're not speaking from our emotions and our feelings, but by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You don't always have to be quick to speak. You don't always have to be the one with a rebuttal. You don't always have to say something for someone that you have a comment. Sometimes it's good to be quiet for a second and let that thing settle and allow God to give you what to say. Sometimes you don't need to say nothing at all. It's okay to be quiet and wait for God to give you what to say before you speak from your emotions, from your pain, from your past, from your hurt, from your frustration because you will cause more damage in the name of Jesus Christ then you would if you were to wait for the Holy Ghost to give you what to say. What we speak must be in alignment with the word of God. Ah, I hear you God. So what does the word of God say? Maybe that's where you need to have your Bible study. What does the word of God say about you? What does the word of God say about your family? What does the word of God say about your finances? What does the word of God say about your health and your wealth and your mind? What does the word of God say about you being a servant of God? What does the word of God say about the purpose and the plan that God has for your life? 
So what you say matters. What you say matters. What you say matters. You got to run everything you say through a filter. You got to run everything you say through your heart. You got to run everything you say. This doesn't align with the word of God. They say speak stuff out of love. Just because you must know it all don't mean everybody want to hear you all the time. Everybody always doing to hear your opinion. You don't always got to say something. Sometimes you need to learn how to listen. You might learn a little bit more if you be quiet and listen. Tell your neighbor, listen. Good God am I. I don't want to let nobody think I'm talking about it. But every now and then, you got to listen and close your mouth. You don't have to comment on everything. Allow God to tell you when to speak. See, some people run their mouth to show off. You don't got to show off. God will tell you when to speak and how to speak and what to say and when to say and how much to say. It's not how much you say all the time. Somebody can say one word, a short phrase that would change your life while somebody else is trying to conjure, conjure up something. Take it forever going around the block repeating themselves. <laughs> Say a meditate on that. Amen. Last point, in verse 10. I, I don't know where you are, but I, I just want to help us be all that God has called us to be because during this pandemic, during this, 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 this time of being isolated, being alone, not being within the four walls, we had a lot of time with ourselves. And I need you to understand that the plan of God hasn't changed for your life and God has still called you to an assignment your last point is that God can still use you where you are God can still use you where you are to make a difference God didn't call you there and for you not to make a difference Amen. look at verse number 10 he says see 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 Jeremiah I have this day set thee over the nations he tells Jeremiah, who said, I am inadequate. I cannot speak. I'm nothing but a youth. He says, I have set thee over nations and over the kingdom. I want you to understand that where you are, God has set you there. Good God Almighty. Where you are, God has set you there. I don't care if you're sitting at the baker's table. I don't care if you're sitting there frying chicken at KFC. I don't care if you're a school teacher, administrator, the superintendent. I don't care if you're working in a warehouse. I don't care if you're a college student. I don't care if you're a high school student, an elementary school student. I don't care if you're a nurse or a doctor. Where you are, God has set you there for such a time as this. And you got to understand that God wants to use you to make a difference. Where you are. Christians raise the standard of the environment. As a Christian, you should raise the standard of your environment. He says, I have set thee this day over the nations and over the kingdom to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down. I cause you to shake things up. I called you to take stuff up by the root and bring it up from root and, 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 and pull down things and destroy things and cast down things and throw down things. I called you to cause a disturbance. Yes. If you show up in an environment and they're still cussing and fussing, drinking and smoking, having sex and fornicating and still talking all manner of foolishness, you got to ask yourself, is your light on? Because when light comes in, darkness has to go out. You got to ask yourself, are you making a difference where God has assigned you? Have you brought any encouragement to your workplace of assignment? Have you brought any light there? Have you, have, have you encouraged anybody? Have you been a walking example of God's mercy and grace? Have you been that amazing grace? How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found out. Once was blind, but now I see. Are you an example of how God has turned your life around? But God just don't call us to tear up stuff. 
to root out things and to throw things down and to destroy things. But you got to recognize you're a change agent. Oh, you're a change agent. You're a change agent. You're a change agent. When you arrive on the scene, things need to get better. He told Jeremiah, I just don't want you to uh, 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 destroy and root up and pull down. He says, but I want you to build and plant. I want you to build and plant. Our assignment, wherever that may be, is to make that environment, that place, that assignment better. Mm -hmm. Because you're there, it should be better. Because you're there, someone should be encouraged. Because you're there, there should be light at the end of the tunnel. Because you're there, somebody should smile. Somebody should have hope. Because you are there, mm -hmm. people around you should be better. Mm -hmm. Have you made anybody better than around you? Has anybody grown since they come in contact with you? Has anybody got a little closer to God because they met you? Have you introduced Christ to anyone besides yourself? Can anybody say that you made a difference in my life? We got to recognize and know this, that we are the hand and the feet of God in our community where he has assigned us. Stop sending God everywhere and you go there yourself. You show mercy. You show kindness. You clothe the hungry. You feed those that, that uh, you clothe the naked. You feed the hungry. You do it yourself. So what is your assignment? God says, I called you to be a change agent. I called you to impact change. The stuff is not understanding. I need just to tear it down. But not just tear down, but we also got to build it back up. We got to plant that when we leave, something else is still going to come up behind us. Yes. Every leader learns how to duplicate themselves. That when they leave, the job doesn't stop. So while I'm there, I'm building, but I'm also planting. So when I leave, what I planted is still going to grow. Think about your children. Think about your assignment. While you're there, you're building them because you see them. But did you plant anything in them? Then when you're not around, there's something there that's going to grow. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I want you to understand, I want you to know that God has a plan for your life. And it starts with us watching what comes out of our mouth. It starts with us not walking around in fear and being paralyzed. It starts with us recognizing that God is a promise keeper. And we got to understand that God called you to make a difference where you are assigned. Yes, Your assignment is to make a difference. Make a place, a person, or a thing better. Because you have yielded to the will of God. Yes. God is calling us to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. So know that you have purpose. And God has a plan for you. Like, don't think that where you are is insignificant. God can use you. Even in that place. As you prepare you, I hear you, God, for the next place. Uh, some of y'all think you're going to stay there. But God didn't tell you to build a house there. He just told you to build a tent there. You're just going to stay there temporarily. And while you're there, there's preparation for your next station in God. But if you don't take care of your assignment in your present place, you won't make it to your next place. So don't wait, don't wait, don't wait for the big stage. Handle your business on the small stage. So when you get to the big stage, you prepare for the lights, camera, and action, and you won't embarrass yourself nor your God. God has a plan for you, my son, my daughter. God has a plan for you. But I know I, I, I quite often feel inadequate because I know the real Craig. 
I know where I come from. I know my pain. I know my hurt. I know what I wrestle with in my flesh. But I still got to yield to the will of God for my life. My life I yield. My voice I lift. My praise I give to you. My life I yield. My voice I lift. My praise I give to you. God wants all of you. And he desires to get the glory out of your life. Bow your hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone on the side of my voice. We thank you, Lord, for that you have a plan for our lives. So, God, even in our seasons of, of an inadequacy, when we don't feel like we are all that we need to be so we can be used by you, God, you just want us to share our testimony that you have saved us, that you have delivered us, that you have changed our lives to God. Because, Lord, you call us to be a prophet to the nations. So, Lord, we just need to put the word of God in our mouth. And share what thus said the Lord. Share our testimony. God, use us for your glory. Don't allow us to miss opportunities to share the good news. And to tell men and women, boys and girls, that Jesus saves. God, allow us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. And God, allow us to be responsible, be on assignment, to fulfill our assignment. Wherever we are, God, you want to use us in the boardroom, in the courtroom, in the jailhouse, in the schoolhouse, in the White House, God, on the street corners, God, in the church house, you want to use us for your glory, God, in the hospital, God, you want to use us in the military, you want to use us for your glory. So God, allow us to be mindful of what we give voice to. We want to praise you in all that we have. We want to declare what thus saith the Lord. We want to share the testimony how you change our lives. And God, we be so careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. Lord, I pray for everyone in the sound of my voice that you bless, that you heal, that you keep them, that you deliver us all, God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. We live with our man, our woman, our boy, and our girl that stand in the valley of decision. Lord, they may feel like their life is in a, 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 a roller coaster ride and so many ups and downs. But God, we pray right now for peace to get in. Hand. If they accept you as your personal Savior, if they believe that God has raised you from the dead and they confess that you are their Lord, God just said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, God, right now we pray for purpose. We pray for clarity. We pray for direction that you will order our steps and we will fall in line with your word and your will. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and clap your hands and declare that God has a plan for your life. That God has a plan for your life and he has called you to be a change agent to make a difference in your assignment. Don't you fear. Don't you bow down to fear. But God wants us to be obedient to his call. And he will empower you to do great things. He says, greater works shall you do. So God is looking for the greater inside of you. If you don't know Jesus in the part of your sins, you can Text us and inbox us on Facebook Live or call the number that will be on the screen. Say, hey, I need Jesus. I need prayer. I need someone to pray with me. Just get in contact with us, send a message, and we will get back with you. Believing that God, God is still able to do anything for the Bible says, so oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So why don't you try God today? Now watch you turn your life around. I pray you've been blessed by the message. I pray you've been blessed by the praise. And I pray that you have a blessed week. Be safe. Share your testimony. And be all that God has called you to do. God bless you. Now
may the grace of God and the spirit of His Holy Spirit rest you in by His forepower and forevermore.